Thank you for joining us for this week's NSCAA live chat. Today, we are celebrating the kickoff of Coaching Education Weekend, which begins Friday, June 14th, and ends Sunday, June 16th. Coaching Education Weekend is an inaugural holiday started by the NSCA to celebrate soccer coaches who are looking to further their career through continued coaching education. Today, I am joined by two such coaches who happen to also be NSCA state directors. Laura Kerrigan, our state director for North Carolina, and Giovanni Pacini, our state director for Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island. Coaches, thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to join us for today's chat. First and foremost, I'd like to give each one of you a chance to tell us about your background, how you got into soccer coaching, and how you got involved with the NSCAA and the state director role. Laura, could you please start us off? Sure. Um, I got into coaching right after college. Um, there weren't a lot of opportunities for women to play beyond college, and I thought it was a great opportunity to stay involved in the college game. Um, and so I coached a couple different places as an assistant coach. I was an assistant coach at William & Mary for three years. I was an assistant coach at Colorado College for a year and at American University for three years uh, before I became a head coach. And I've coached at pretty much every level, at the college level, at the high school level, at the youth level. Um, and I very much enjoy what I'm doing now, working in high school. With uh, I work with the boys' team and, and I coach the girls' team. So it's given me a wide variety of experience in terms of coaching. Great. And Giovanni, could you please tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into coaching? Sure. It, it was a little bit by accident. Uh, ironically, I wanted to get into radio and TV broadcasting, believe it or not. And um, when I got out of college, uh, uh, my local high school was in need of a soccer coach and the athletic director who knew me well and knew my, my background in soccer. And uh, he basically gave me a call. He said, you'd be interested in coaching the high school team. And I emphatically said, sure. Didn't think it was something I'd be doing, but um, that was 32 years ago, and um, from that high school experience, I wanted to become a college coach uh, here in the Boston area, starting at uh, Mass Maritime Academy, then went on to Nazarene College, a short stint at uh, MIT, and now I'm currently the head men's soccer coach at LaSalle College in, uh, in Newton, Massachusetts. Um, been involved with ODP and club, um, do a lot of work in goalkeeper training and development with local clubs. And uh, wear several hats for the NSCA. I'm an NSCA master coach. I'm on the national staff, national goalkeeper staff, and I chair the uh, NSCA technical committee. So, uh, soccer is my entire professional life. Um, so that's my my alleged claim to fame. Great, great. Thank you, Giovanni. Um, could you please elaborate on your role within Coaching Education Weekend? Um, what kind of courses do you have coming up over this weekend? You know. Who are they developed for, and what are some of the highlights and key takeaways of those courses? Giovanni, could you please start? Sure. We actually have a, we've got two courses this weekend on this Saturday in Danvers, Massachusetts, which is just north of Boston. We're doing a a level two uh, diploma course, which is designed for coaches who are involved with the uh, U eight to U ten uh, age groups, uh, and it's a bit of a the second part, if you will, from our from our level one. And then on, uh, on Sunday, I'm, I'm pretty excited because it's one of my favorite courses to, to uh, offer and to be a part of is the Special Topics Reading the Game course, which is done in conjunction with the local Boston PDL team, the Boston Rams. And the Reading the Game course is designed for coaches, primarily who, anyone who's coaching 11 aside. Um, and what we do through this course is try to train the coach's eye uh, to, to pick up things in the course of a match that, that are breaking down, whether it's with the individual player, whether it's... Uh, a unit of players, the entire team, different phases of the game. We try to sharpen their eye um, to pick up those those deficiencies, those those challenges, and then you know uh, you know get get them to uh, understand th that those things drive uh, 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 training sessions. So pretty excited about that one on Sunday. Great. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about the level two? Um, who is specifically targeted for, and what are some of the key takeaways within that course itself? Yeah, like I said, the uh, the level two is primarily for coaches U8 uh, to U10, and the level one, which you know we talk about, you know U6 is is, is more of a of a games driven approach, and for the first time with the U8 and U10, we kind of get away a little bit from the from the games approach because they're a little bit older, uh, kinesthetically they're a little bit more developed, and we can do some things that are a little bit more advanced, but still. Uh, age specific um, to what they're, they're capable of doing physically, what they can understand cognitively. So it's kind of that next step in terms of their development and what they, what they can do as, as young uh, U8s and U10s. Okay, great. Thank you. Laura, sure. could you please tell us about your course coming up? I believe it's a goalkeeping course, correct? 
Yes, we're offering the Goalkeeping 3 course here at Wake Med Park in Cary, North Carolina. And anyone who's ever been to Wake Med Park, it's a tremendous facility. It's where the Railhawks play. And Keith Jenkins, who's on our regional staff, has um, graciously opened it up over the last several years uh, to NSEA courses. Uh, but the Goalkeeping 3 is an advanced level goalkeeping course. Um, we've had the Goalkeeping 1 and the Goalkeeping 2 there for, for coaches who want to learn more about how to teach goalkeepers uh, and coach goalkeepers uh, and those are more geared towards the coach of the entire team who wants uh, to train their keeper as well as the team. Uh, Goal day three gets into a lot of specific knowledge um, about how to train, how, how to be a goalkeeping trainer and how to give your goalkeeper uh, more ideas tactically and technically uh, to more of the advanced level. Uh, Tony Giacicco has done a tremendous job with the Goalkeeping Academy and developing these courses. Um, Bill Steffen is coming in to, uh, to teach the course this weekend. And then I myself will be out at Murfreesboro, Tennessee teach, teaching uh, on the advanced national course out there. And that's more of an advanced level course. We offer that over the course of a week or over two weekends. And, and this particular one's going to be over two weekends in Tennessee. But they're being offered all over the country throughout, uh, throughout the summer. Great. Could you elaborate just a little bit more on that advanced national course? What are some of the key takeaways and how is that course really structured? I know we have you know, two different portions, a lecture and a field session. Could you just touch on those a bit, please? That's right. Well, well, starting off with the national course, the national course um, starts you off based on a six versus six model. And we talk about small group tactics, one versus one, all the way up to three versus two, and then touch on four versus two and five versus three. And uh, the advanced national course builds it even further out of an eight versus eight model. And we talk about uh, uh, group tactics, uh, blocks of players such as the midfield block, the, the forward block, but we incorporate that within the team. So we have some lecture sessions where we delve into areas such as psychology and restarts and uh, tactics of attacking, tactics of defending, but we also have many field sessions where we break down the various sections of the field um, and we even go into counterattacking and uh, certainly all aspects of attacking, all aspects of, of defending um, and teach different methodologies as to how you might reach your players. Great. Thank you very much. Now, Giovanni, some of our viewers may not be clear what the role of a state director actually entails. Could you kind of elaborate on what your role as a state director actually does entail? Yeah, essentially a state director is responsible for overseeing uh, all NSA coaching education courses being set up. And it's, and it's not a couple different ways, uh, Andrew. Um, typically what happens, uh, we'll get a phone call, we'll get an email from a, an individual or a, someone representing a group requesting a, a particular course. Uh, or there are times when I know in, in my case as a state director I will proactively just set something up on my college campus at LaSalle College and open it up and, and, and get folks to participate in, in that capacity. But uh, more often than not it's someone who's, who's going to give you a call and they want a particular course or they want some advice on what course um, what courses they need to offer the, their, um, their particular group. Um, and essentially it's pretty simple. After that phone call email, I, you know, we go back, we say we need a, a appropriate field space, a classroom that's PowerPoint friendly. Uh, certainly players that are age specific to the course are always helpful. Uh, and then we, we can go with it. Uh, it's, it's a pretty straightforward, pretty simple approach. Great. Thank you for that explanation, Giovanni. Um, could you touch on why you decided to participate in Coaching Education Weekend? Obviously, this is an inaugural event, so this is the first time it's ever occurred. What really stuck out and got you involved with Coaching Education Weekend? Well, Coaching Education is its just so very important. You, you, can't, you can't overstate the importance of, of, of continuing education. Uh, so the opportunity to, to kind of get on this bandwagon, so to speak, for me was very, very appealing and, and it coincided terrific with this particular weekend because we, uh, we have two courses going on here in the, in, in the, uh, in the Boston area. Um, so it, it's just another method by which we can stress the importance of coaching education, another method by which we can stress the importance of continuing education, continuing development, and that constant need and desire to grow with soccer professionals and soccer coaches. Great. And Laura, could you kind of touch on the reasons why you got involved in Coaching Education Weekend, please? Yes. Well, Coaching Education, regardless of this weekend or any other time, it is a fantastic opportunity to better your knowledge and be a better coach for your players. It also is a great opportunity to connect with other coaches um, and develop a network. 
um, not, not only in terms of looking for jobs in the future, but really in terms of exchanging knowledge. Um, the amount of friends I have that I can contact when I've got a question or a situation that, that I want to deal with um, is amazing. And so many of those people I've met through coaching education courses. It's also great when you have an opportunity to, to watch a game, uh, to analyze a game with other coaches, and that's a big part of uh, some of the courses that we do, like the Advanced National this weekend that I'll be working on, we have a match analysis. And it's tremendous when you get to analyze a game or even watch a game with other coaches. So just the exchange of information, the exchange of knowledge between coaches is absolutely fantastic. And having a coaching education weekend just puts the emphasis on that. But there are so many opportunities for, for coaching education throughout the entire year. Thank you. Um, now you both, both touched on the importance of coaching education. For the coaches who are out there listening, if you could tell them, why should they continue coaching education? Laura, do you want to go ahead and start us off with that answer, please? Sure. Well, um, you know, I'm a teacher too, and, and something that we always say is if you get to the point where you say you can't learn anymore um, about coaching or about teaching, um, you're not a very good coach because there's always something else to learn. There's always something else to uh, to, to catch your eye, to, to catch your brain, um, and, and make you want to um, be a better coach for your players. There are, there are always new theories. There are always new discussions. Um, and so any chance you have to better your knowledge will make you a better coach for your players and really enrich your life as well. And Giovanni, what are your thoughts on that? Why should, co why should coaches be cognizant of continuing their education? Well, to, to kind of dovetail what Laura just talked about, I, w I was a, an educator for 24 years in a public school system here in, in uh, the Boston area. And, and coaches need to, to realize that the word coach is synonymous with the word teacher. Uh, the, the dynamics are very much the same. That, that feel is indeed a classroom. The players are students. And the coach is indeed a teacher. And all the things that go into making a, a terrific classroom environment in any classroom in America are the same things that go into any soccer field. So, so coaches need to understand that they are indeed, indeed teachers. And like Laura said, if, if, if you're a good teacher and you're passionate about it, you're, you're always growing. And then like any other profession, things change. Um, you know, methods change. Um, uh, strategies change. There is this evolution in any, any profession that we're involved with. And coaching is no different. So to stay abreast of what's going on globally, what's, what's, to, to stay abreast of what's going on in terms of the latest methods in, in, uh, in coaching, education is everything. Education is everything. And it's, it's, it's got to be a lifelong commitment, a lifelong uh, process, and, and a lifelong passion, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be quite frank to say. So uh, that, that's why it's so very important to, to stay on top of things um, through coaching education. Definitely. And for the viewers out there watching who aren't familiar with the NSCA, the NSCA has multiple offerings for all coaches, whether that be a youth coach, a recreational parent, or the club coach, or the highest co a college coach, such as yourself, Giovanni. Um, you know, we have a lot of young coaches out there who are just trying to get their career started. If you had some pieces of advice for them, what would that be? Laura, could you go ahead and start us off? Sure. Well, uh, when you're a young coach, definitely try to take advantage of any opportunity to work with more experienced coaches, uh, broaden your horizons, have a variety of experiences, um, make sure that you can work with different coaches, work different camps, uh, move from place to place a little bit as an assistant coach, um, volunteer for opportunities, work with ODP if you can. Um, any opportunity to learn from others, go out and watch other coaches uh, do a session. And that's a tremendous opportunity to, to see how somebody else coaches and, and get some other ideas. If, uh, if there's a pro team in your area, like we're fortunate to have the Carolina Railhawks here, or uh, the national team comes out um, to train in your area, go over and, and watch. See if it's an opportunity for you to go and, and look at those coaches and see what they're doing. And don't just look at the activities that they're doing in, the, um, in terms of the games and so forth, but, but see how the coaches interact with their players. I think um, just watching Pia Sunhaga when they came here to train, just watching her interaction with the players taught me so much about uh, a relationship that she had with the players and her positive feedback that she gave to, to players. And I, I learned quite a bit. Uh, about coaching from watching other coaches. So I'd say that's a, that's a great opportunity. And of course, as we've said before, coaching education. Um, as I was going through the different coaches with the USS, coaching courses with the USSF and with the NSCAA, um, I learned so much from the different coaches that were on those courses, not just the instructors, which of course I learned much from, but also the other coaches that were there. So please take advantage of that as well. 
That's a great piece of advice, Laura. It's not just coaching itself. It's networking and getting your name out there, whether that would be volunteering for a club or actually working for a club. It all goes towards the same goal of furthering your career. Giovanni, what are your thoughts and what would your advice be for a young coach who's just trying to start out his career? I love this question. It's, my, my advice is pretty, pretty straightforward. Take your time. Uh, too often, and this is not a knock on today's generation, uh, we, could, we could go off on that, but too often young coaches just want to kind of rack up course after course after course to build a resume. And, and, and what they don't get their arms around and what they don't practice um, is, is actually taking the knowledge that they've, they've, they've obtained in a coaching course and actually practicing it, trying it. Um, you know, getting experience is what I'm trying to say. Just, just get the experience. And when you think you've, you've got your arms around the content that you learned in a coaching course, then it's time to move on to the next course. There's no substitution for experience. Enjoy the ride. Take your time. And, and, and that's the journey that you need to get to, you know, to get yourself on as a young coach, not just racking up you know, course after course, diploma after diploma, license after license, where it looks great on a, on a resume, but in reality, at the end of the day, a real, a good teacher, a good coach can do it on the field, and is the only way to get to that point is through experience, through experience. So, the advice to young people: take your time, enjoy the ride. Great, thanks, Giovanni, and that was a great piece of advice. Um, we're going to go ahead and open it up to questions now that we've received via our social networking and via email. Uh, the first question we have, uh, Laura, I'll go ahead and pose this question to you. I want to take a level six, but I don't know the prerequisites. Can you elaborate on how I would register in the process for signing up? Well, you don't actually have to go through uh, the other levels to take a level six. So, so there really is no prerequisite. You can go ahead and take the level six um, right away. Um, but uh, every, every course has different things that they're going to focus in on. Um, so that's not a problem. I'd say go on the NSCA site and there is a tab that shows education and there's a master schedule and if you hit in the master schedule uh, the state it will show you all the courses that are being offered within your state um, and so that's a good opportunity to look through there or you can just simply contact your state uh, director like Giovanni or myself um, just to whatever state you're in you can contact that state director and they can tell you what's coming up in the state. Perfect. You know, I think that's a really good point is that our level six doesn't have a prerequisite. So for somebody who's interested in learning, who's coaching at the club level, this is a great place to start out to prepare yourself for our format to get ready for the national, which is the next course that's higher up. Giovanni, now question going your way. Um, I have collegiate level playing experience, but no coaching education. I have coached at camps, but where do I begin pursuing a career in soccer coaching? Well, much like what Laura just mentioned, um, you, you could certainly call your state director um, and, and get some, some feedback from your state director. Um, but through the NSCAA, we have what's something that's called the Career Center. Uh, just go to our websites and, and you can uh, you know, check that out and, and you can get some uh, ideas and some guidelines and, and a, a bit of a career path as to, as to where you might be able to, uh, to begin. Um, and then, you know, be realistic. Um, all too often, folks want to kind of go at the highest level. I want to be a college coach right away. Um, you know, find, find the, the level that, that best suits you and, and start there. Um, but I, I'd say go to the Career Center on the NAC website. And then, uh, as Laura said, you know, give a call or email your local uh, state director and, you know, uh, let the journey begin. Great point, Giovanni, and that's something new to the NSCA website. That's our career center, and for young coaches who are just starting out, if you have any idea where to begin or you're clueless, you can head there. There's tons of tips for young coaches and some ideas on how and where you should begin your soccer coaching career. Giovanni, I have another question for you, and this actually comes from Massachusetts. This is from Andres. He's asking about the Winchester, Massachusetts Goalkeeper 3 course coming up. Uh, you know, he'd like some details on that, and he was wondering if you'll actually be teaching at Giovanni. Uh, yeah, the Winchester course, um, we're still waiting to get some, some few extra to, uh, co uh, coaches to, to fill up the course. We're awful close. 
I, I believe that it will will be running. I will not be uh, on board with that. Actually, I'll be down in New Jersey, um, uh, involved with the high school diploma course down at, down in New Jersey. But we have a very outstanding instructor, George Costellis, who's uh, on our national goalkeeper staff, who will be the lead instructor for that course uh, out in Winchenden, and, and uh, they will uh, certainly enjoy George's energy and, and knowledge and passion for the goalkeeper position. So, uh, as of right now, it's on. Uh, we're getting close to actually uh, filling it and get the minimum requirement of coaches. And my best advice is to stay on top of the NSCA website uh, for that, or just shoot me an email. Uh, I can keep you up to date with the course uh, out in Winchenden. Great. Thank you, Giovanni. All right, Laura, we have a question coming in from Greg, who works at Boca Raton Christian School. If a coach is clearly gifted at teaching tactics, but is poor in their ability to teach technique, do you position them within the club such that they can solely focus on coaching tactics, or do you insist that they develop their weaknesses as well? Well, I think uh, you certainly want to use the strengths of that coach, but every good coach should develop um, their knowledge and be able to teach technical as well as tactical um, skill level. Uh, so I think it would be important for that coach to take some coaching courses, learn how to teach the technique. Um, I'm not sure what their experience level is, but um, if they've played at any level, I'm sure they, they know something about technique. They just might be a little bit confused about how to teach it and so I would say I would recommend to them to uh, take one of the NSCA courses. Um, in the national course we do quite a bit with technique but certainly in the regional level courses we do quite a bit with technique so that would be a great opportunity for them to develop their ability to teach technical as well as tactical because every coach really needs to be able to teach both. Great and this question comes in from Twitter. Um, I'll go ahead and start with you and then open it up to Giovanni. If I can't make it to a course how else can I get involved with the NSCA and coaching education as a whole? Well, um, in, in terms of not being able to make it to a course, um, there are many opportunities, uh, many offered locally, so that, that is certainly something. But we do also have different um, resources that are available online. So if you go onto the NSCA website, you'll see that there are videos uh, that are available. Um, sometimes there are like chats about different things. Um, there, there are resources there for coaches to tap into. Great. And Giovanni, you know, one thing that Laura didn't mention is we do offer coaching education at our convention. Could you go ahead and tell us a little bit about convention and then the education that we offer there as well, since that is one of our biggest events of the year? Well, you read my line there, Andrew. Yes. Um, yeah, if you can't make it to a course locally or it's not quite on your radar or in the short term, uh, I would definitely, uh, if, if you're a coach, uh, check out the NSCA National Convention. Um, it, it is arguably the largest uh, collection of, of coaches in the world, and you can attend um, you know, a, a number of different presentations from on-field sessions by some of the top coaches from our organization, the NSCA, from international uh, level coaches. Uh, there are roundtable discussions. Um, the opportunity to network is absolutely outstanding. There's the exhibit hall where you can kind of check out the latest and the greatest of, of soccer gear and attire, that, that, that type of thing. So over the course of, of, a, of a few days, you can attend the national convention and walk away with a wealth of information um, that, that will certainly make you a, a better soccer coach. So uh, I think the next one coming up is in Philadelphia in uh, January 2014. So if you haven't done so, circle it on your calendar. Uh, and, and definitely attend. You'll, I think if you go once, you're, you're hooked forever. That is uh, definitely a good point, Giovanni. I went for my first time last year, and it's something that I would say is indescribable. Um, I have one last question for both you guys, and this question actually comes from within our office. You know, both of you are great soccer coaches, but I'd like to know a little bit about co how coaching education has specifically benefited you and your career. So Giovanni, could you kind of just start us off and get a, give us an idea of how it's benefited you specifically? Well, I don't think I'd, I'd be where I am today without coaching education. I, you know, I've been doing this for 32 years, which is a long time. And I think back when I first started coaching at the high school level uh, without any knowledge. I was this young, brash, know-it-all. I had played at a good level. Uh, and I thought I knew it all. I, I didn't know anything. Uh, and it wasn't until I took my, my very first coaching course, which was through the NSCA, where I was immediately humbled uh, But what I did not know. And then, again, used to use the word journey, the journey began. Uh, and then that first course led to another and another and another. And um, that journey continues. I still uh, try to get educated and evolve, even as a you know, a guy who's been at it for, for a lot of years. But, um, no, I wouldn't be where I am today without education. I, I certainly could not hone my craft as a coach without coaching education. Um, 
So it has meant everything to me, which is why I'm so passionate about this particular weekend, uh, the coaching education weekend, and you know that ongoing effort from by all of us to continue to grow and to evolve and to develop as coaches. Definitely. And what are your thoughts on that, Laura? Tell us a little bit about how coaching education has impacted your career. Well, when I was a young coach, I fell into that trap that Giovanni was uh, warning some of the young coaches about uh, in terms of let me get my C license, let me get my B license, let me get my A license, let me let me knock these off, let me put a check mark next to them and move on. Um, and then a coaching colleague of mine, uh, Colleen Corwell, said, you know, Kerrigan, you should probably take, you should probably look into the NSEA and take one of those courses because the emphasis really there is on education. It's about learning. It's uh, it's about developing your ability to connect with players, developing your knowledge about the game. And uh, and so the first course I enrolled in was an advanced national course, and Shellis Hyman was one of my instructors, and you could not ask for a better instructor. Uh, and I started to learn quite a bit about the reasoning behind uh, why we do things and uh, the tactical choices that mean we make and, and what we give up when we get something um, and it really uh, gave me a thirst for more knowledge and so I started attending the convention as you talked about and and like you the first convention I attended I, I was just like wow it was amazing to I, I couldn't go to enough sessions and and I couldn't write down uh, as, as many things as I wanted to and then as I've gone to convention after convention after convention you, you really start to look at and say what can I take from this coach what can I take from that coach and, and how can I um, really uh, put it into my own game and, and to develop my own game uh, based on things that I learned from other people so I, I can't describe to you how much coaching education and the NSAA has, has developed um, my ability to be a better coach. And, and it's also, they talk about the process of self-evaluation and, and sitting back after uh, a game, sitting back after um, a section of your season, sitting back after a whole season and saying, what could I have done better as a coach? What did I do well? What did I do not so well? And, and how can I improve? Um, and every single year, uh, there are things that I, I look at and say, wow, I didn't handle that a, as well as I could have. I, I, I should have done that a little bit better, and, and it makes me a better coach. So, uh, so, so I sit back and think, oh, those players who had me 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I feel sorry for them because I'm a better coach now than I was then. But um, that, that's how you learn as a coach. That's how you learn as a teacher. You know, that's a great point, Laura, is that you're not only paying attention to your coach or whoever you're, whoever's teaching you, but you can absorb exactly how they're teaching you and their methodology for it. And that can be something that's invaluable, something that can't be taught. Uh, it looks like uh, that's all the time we have for today. So I'd like to thank Laura and Giovanni. Thanks, guys, for uh, taking the time to speak with our viewers today. And I'd also like to thank everyone who's tuning in. If you submitted a question and it was not answered, feel free to check out nsca.com tomorrow to see a response to your question. If you are interested in participating in Coaching Education Weekend, it is not too late. You can go ahead and check out nsca.com slash CEW for more information on courses which could be in your area. Also, feel free to follow us on Twitter at NSCAA and on Facebook at facebook.com slash NSCAA to check out photos from some of the courses going on this weekend. Again, thank you to Laura and Giovanni, and everybody have a great day.